Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. We're continuing our Conversations with the Candidates series, where we'll be interviewing the four candidates running for selectmen and the two candidates running for school committee. I'm joined on this episode by one of the candidates for selectmen, Bob O'Regan. Thank you, Bob, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And the purpose of this episode in this conversation series is to introduce the candidates to the public and to the voters and to have some uh, conversation about the issues at hand of the day. So uh, we'll get started, Bob, by uh, it, kind of introducing yourself. Uh, you've been as obviously a selectman for the last three years, known in town, but uh, what, uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe some of the, the your personal, personal side away from the Board of Selectmen. Um, well, I'm one of five. Uh, there are five of us. We started in East Boston. That's where my family settled um, in the middle of the 1800s going back um, on Saratoga Street, so, uh, which is in the flight path of Logan Airport, so I, uh, that's where we, st we started. My father got uh, a job working on um, the Apollo space craft, so uh, we moved out uh, to Chelmsford where I graduated from high school. And one of the fun things for me is, every, and they didn't know he was doing this at the time, but uh, he would take me into the factory on Saturdays. Uh, and they applied the heat, that's where they put the heat shield on the Apollo. And we'd walk through the factory and he would have me touch the, the spaceship. So I think I touched every Apollo mm -hmm. as it was being made. Um, so I graduated from um, Chelmsford High, put myself through college at Tufts, um, stayed for a master's in economics at Tufts, uh, put myself through law school at Georgetown. Um, I was fortunate to be managing editor on my law review. When I got out of law school, um, shortly after that, Carol and I got married. I went to work for uh, the Supreme Judicial Court in an office they have on supervising the practice of law. Then I went into private practice. I've been in private practice since, um, and I'm now a partner in Burns and Levinson. I do litigation and business advice. Our family, we, Carol and I moved here 30 years ago. Time flies. Mm. Um, we have two, uh, two children. They went through the Stoughton Public Schools, got a great education here. Uh, got to be involved in many aspects of the community. Um, uh, so that's a little bit about about me and and where I'm from. Sure, I, and uh, in, in terms of getting involved with the selectmen, you know, you ran three years ago, your term is finishing up. Uh, what made you want to run for re-election? And what are some of the things you'd like to accomplish in a second term if elected? Well, the things that are making me want to run for re-election are basically the same things that made me want to run for the first time. Um, uh, Stoughton's been a wonderful community to raise a family, so for me there's a sense of giving back. Among the friends uh, we've made through our children and, and, and ourselves in the community, we, we know that there are people who do a number of things in, in, in the community, whether it's on you know, sports or other things. I can do, I can do, you know, um, town me, I, I can do these kinds of things, and other people can, can do other things. So this is something with my training and background I can do for my community. And, and so what I'm interested in doing is uh, continuing to work on uh, developing the tax base. Um, maybe seven years ago, I led the charge to create a planning office in the community with the goal being to help develop the tax base to solidify revenue and, and allow us to get back the, the character of the community that many of us saw slipping away. So uh, planning is important for that and economic development is important for that. I worked on that on the zoning board. I was on the zoning board for about eight years. Uh, and I saw that as, as some of these issues were coming uh, along, the master plan, economic development, um, the town finances were, were pinched. 
that maybe I, I could contribute a little more on the Board of, Select Board of Selectmen to move these ideas along. And we've made a lot of progress in, in, in the last three years on uh, bringing the town along. We can see some of this in the construction that's going on in the square and the construction that's going along up and down Washington Street. Um, and there's more that can come. It's going to come. We can either have the development and the tax base grow in a healthy way for the community, in a planned way that builds the base in a solid way uh, with a mix of retail, commercial, and industrial. Or we can let it happen through special permits, which is some of what we've seen. And we don't get, I think, in that process to direct the development of the town that preserves the character, that gives us the characteristics that we want moving forward. So I see being reelected as a way to push that and to make government work better. Getting the tax base deeper and broader means that the burden on the residential uh, tax rate can be tampered. So. Um, so how is that important? It's important because our costs are going to continue to go up in areas we can't control. Now let, let's talk about that a little bit because there's some capital projects that are either coming down the road or are being talked about that are going to cost the town you know, a lot of money. And these are, just to put in perspective, a cost of a high school would be roughly the same amount of money as the operating budget in a single year for the, the town. You're obviously not going to fund that through the budget. So talking about building the tax base and, and the cost, what would you propose for the best way to go about funding some of these large projects, like a high school, uh, a police and fire public safety building, a library, so on and so forth? Those are just some of the ones that have been discussed. Well, the first thing to do, which is sort of a mantra that I was doing on the floor of town meeting and continue is, these projects need to be identified and there needs to be an estimate of the price tag put on them so we know what our revenue needs are. And, and uh, we don't wind up uh, passing on a project that we need because we haven't looked ahead three, four, five years to put ourselves in a position to get the revenue. We can do that. We have a great location. So how do we go about doing it? One of the things that we did uh, the first year I was on the board was we established a building reserve fund. So just like when you're getting ready <coughs> excuse me, to buy a house, you start saving. So I look at it as we start as a little savings account for some of these buildings that we need to put up. Uh, the other thing that uh, we have to do is set priorities among the projects on which are more important for the community and why, because there's various reasons. I would like to... Um, identify er areas of the community for economic development. And I've checked this with Zoning Council and, 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 and my own firm. We could do this. You can't appropriate it this way, but you can sort of target the revenue. Town meeting would still have to vote the appropriation. Our biggest opportunity to develop the tax base is in the North Stoughton area. Uh, it's interesting that you, that you and, say and that because there's so much focus right now on downtown. Right. So, do you f so obviously you feel that there are other places in town that we should be looking? Well, the, the point is that if we were to say, um, let's take an area of North Stoughton and draw a, 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 a red mark around an area that we're going to designate uh, for development, you know, same idea as a, um, as a building reserve fund, we say to ourselves, the new revenue from that area is going to be for these capital projects. And that'll do a few things. It'll focus our efforts because it, it'll, it'll motivate us to avoid uh, a two and a half override drive. I would rather have our energy go toward recruiting, developing, and maintaining the tax base than a disagreement over whether we should uh, do a two and a half override for a project we all need. So it focuses our energy. The areas that, um, that I think we should focus on on economic development are North Stoughton, the downtown, um, 
Route 27 going south towards Brockton, that commercial area, and to a lesser ex extent, um, uh, Route 138 south on the eastern line. I think there's some opportunity to get that area m more hospitable to commercial activity than it is now. But all of 138 could be could be focused on uh, better and, and, and used to raise the tax base. We are in a better position than many communities because we're on major highway. We already have commercial and industrial here. If we can capitalize on the, and see how to do it, we can come up with a way to fund, I think, a good part of these capital projects and keep the burden off of the homeowner. Are you talking looking for businesses like an Amazon, which just moved to Stoughton off of you know Page Street uh, a few months ago? Are you looking for things like that? Or are you just looking for simple uh, biz expansion of businesses? Both. Both. We need to, and this is happening, reach out to the businesses we have in Stoughton. Find out and encourage them to develop ways to expand in Stoughton. Your best source for developing your tax base are the businesses you have in your community and attract other you know, national or global companies like Amazon. Why uh, would an Amazon want to be here? Why would some of these other businesses want to be here? Because of our location. And stop underselling ourselves on location and capitalizing on it. And that overlays the other thing that I've been focusing on, uh, which is to improve our our zoning. Now, zoning is about as dull a topic as you can mm -hmm. come up with. But what zoning means to people coming in to invest in the community, whether it's a house or a business or an industry, is what can you do? How, where can you put your building? How big can it be? What use can you make of it? And, and I know from the zoning board and since being on the board of selectmen, that one of the things that will help us most take the burden off the homeowner and develop the tax base is to get our zoning right. Our zoning is antiquated. It's cumbersome. It's difficult. It, do you find it concerning how long the process can take just to get something approved through some of these? I mean, it could take upwards of more than a year. Oh, m much more than a year. And the reason it takes so long is because in order to develop some of these projects, there has to be an exception made to the existing zoning. There has to be a variance or a special permit. And then on top of that, there's some site plan aspects, which is not uncommon. But because our zoning is so out of date, for a major project com to come into the community you know, requires a lot of effort by a potential developer. And my concern is, so they go somewhere else. So to get back to use North Stoughton as an example, I <coughs> North Stoughton uh, should be one of the priorities for developing our commercial tax base. Um, there's, there's a process for streamlined or expedited uh, permitting. We could do that. Uh, pipe dream you know, example is that there's a billion and a half dollar biotech uh, investment fund at the state level. Let's go after it. You know, I'm not sure that we have any place right now where we could do that, but let's find it. We can pull that off. You know, we've got the team to do it. The Amazon deal shows that we've got the skill set to attract it, and Amazon helps us because it says to other businesses uh, of that same caliber, this is a community that will work well for you if you come here. And now moving back to the downtown, uh, more so from like a traffic standpoint, because that's been a topic that has been coming up at the Board of Selectmen uh, recently. Uh, what, what's your take on the current situation in downtown Stoughton and what needs to be done to improve the climate in downtown so that it's attractive once again for businesses and residents to go and frequent these businesses? Well, the, the only way to describe traffic in downtown is like trying to drive through an egg beater, right? The road configuration was uh, was set up, you know, for horses and buggies and not adapted over the course of time. Y you know this because you've been at these meetings. We can go back to right after World War II, and there are many, many 
uh, uh, um, proposals for realigning those roads, all of them split up the number of intersections coming in to one place. So I think that has to be done. I think to get there, we, we ought to try a demonstration project or two, and that's you know, a little temporary fix using cones and flags and signals just to see how the traffic works. I don't know of anyone who thinks the traffic situation that we've got now is a desirable one. I don't recall a demonstration project to see after we did this construction a few years ago if it would be what we want to do. So we should do a demonstration project. We should team up and partner with the MBTA. And last March, we made a presentation to the MBTA for that purpose. Uh, that includes um, reconfiguring some of the roadways ac across what is now the right-of-way behind the train station. Uh, uh, that is doable, uh, and that would alleviate some of the egg-beater effect of all of the roads coming in to one place. Um, and there seems to be a lot of groups looking at the downtown right now in town. Is that, in your eyes, productive, or is it can it be confusing? Like, w which group has the authority here? I mean, by my count, you have three or four different you have a master plan committee, you have a redevelopment authority, you have uh, a, a downtown business group now, the selectmen, the, um, it, it, you, have, you have a lot of different players in the situation. Is it at all, uh, do you feel it's beneficial? Or do you, would you rather see something more streamlined and unified? So this is, you know, this is a good example of maybe a, a skill set that I can bring uh, to, the, to the board to be reelected because it, it's important to understand the function of each of these groups and how they are contributing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing because uh, all of these groups are active. There's overlap on them, but they're also different. So you're bringing different perspectives into the solution. We have to understand the problem we're talking about. Uh, before we start to talk about what possible solutions are. And so one of the things that tends to happen is people disagree over solutions, but they're not talking about the same problem. So having these various groups with different responsibilities, approaching the development of the downtown different ways is a good thing. So let's start the Master Planning Committee. The Master plan Committee, which I sit on, is an overview of planning for the entire community. There is a focus on the downtown, there's a focus on other things, but the Master Planning Committee would, will, is not getting involved in the detail, road configuration, uh, business residential development, but rather on the overview of how redeveloping the downtown fits into the, to the entire community. The Board of Selectmen, and, and this was at my urging before I was on the board, delegated to the Redevelopment Authority the responsibility for the actual redevelopment of the downtown. We're lucky as a community our size, we're one of the few that has a Redevelopment Authority. And that gives us a tool to use in, in dealing with redevelopment that's very special because uh, uh, the Redevelopment Authority has abilities to get into arrangements with property owners and potential businesses that ordinary government doesn't have. The downtown e economic business group being led by our economic development officer is a tool to engage the business community to understand how the business community can, um, what they want, what they think is feasible, to partner in the redevelopment of the downtown so that we, we have a way to approach the downtown that people who are in business there now or who want to be can help direct it uh, and, and we can get a development that works. The Board of Selectmen is involved because the Board of Selectmen is the chief executive uh, agency for the town. We're the road commissioners. Uh, all of the roads in the downtown are under the direction of the Board of Selectmen. So the Board of Selectmen is, is the starting point for how the roads work. And on that score, let me just, let me just uh, tie all these together. So the re a few years ago, the Redevelopment Authority was delegated you know, the task of coming up with what would happen with the downtown. 
The master planning uh, committee hired uh, some consultants to work on the, um, the development, and economic development includes the downtown. There was no appropriation for the roads. Every consultant, every member in town, you know, I would dare you to find one member of town meeting who would think the downtown can be made to work without doing something with the roads. So um, I was successful in having the, uh, a warrant article inserted from, by the Board of Selectmen, I think in my first year, to engage the engineering study for the road work. That study is nearing completion. The Redevelopment Authority has engaged uh, a firm to help with the design of the downtown, the concept design. Recently, there have been community meetings where both teams have been present. I think you've been at them, where the traffic folks and the Redevelopment Authority's folk, traffic folks under the supervision of the Board of Selectmen, the town manager, the town engineer, the Redevelopment Authority's development consultants, and they're working like this so that these issues come together and we get it right. And that's something that I've spent a lot of time uh, trying to help move along and I'm, you know, I'd like the opportunity. I'm committed to getting it right this way and getting it done because one of the things that, that you will find is there's, there's study after study and after study. There's a lot study. of criticism about that that they don't always get finished or implemented. And one of the things that I'm committed to do and, uh, and, and, and hope I get the opportunity to do is in another term, we get these in and we come up with an approach and we get it done. Now we have, uh, we're approaching about five, five and a half minutes left in the show. So uh, just some other topics I'd like to, to touch on. Uh, one is the, uh, the board selectmen oversee the town manager and the, uh, the town manager has not been formally evaluated uh, f in a while from the, the selectmen. Uh, what would your, what's your opinion of the job that the town manager has done? I think he's done a good job. I think that th it's a difficult position for anybody to be in. The average shelf life of a town, me a town manager is three to five years. Um, uh, he's a professional town manager. Uh, he is, uh, he's trying to do, and he's been, there's been a lot of things put on his plate uh, to, to focus on. But I think he's done a very good job. Uh, let me pick out a few examples. One of them that st stands out for me is the, the approach to the South Coast Rail that was developed through the town manager's office that was presented to state officials that really, I think, has gone a long way to help us create a good working relationship if South Coast Rail goes forward for the benefit of the town. A lot of that is done behind the scenes. On personnel uh, issues for the community, uh, he, you know, he saw that there were some issues in the way that the town em employees, compensation and, uh, and budgeting uh, were affected. And so he presented in town meeting adopted a pay scale and a pay grid, and he's worked to have town employees, and this is the selectman's policy, and I agree with it, um, that you know, all town employees you know, uh, have an expectation that's reasonable, and this is what the salary uh, grid, and, the, and, the, and there's a grid now. And I on, know that was on, a contentious, I know that was a contentious issue. Are, are you concerned that, that, that there's still some uh, bad morale or just bad feelings among some of the town employees, some of the town union groups over over that issue. Sure, yeah, sure. I think that um, it's important that the, that that the employees for the town feel uh, appreciated and listened to, because they are appreciated and listened to. Uh, but you know, one of the problems that was going on was that you know, municipal employees were, uh, first of all, predicting budget to budget was an issue because where the pay scales would go was, was different. Th this fixes that because town meetings set it at 2.5%. And it also allows that if you're doing the same kind of work uh, in the community, you're going to be getting paid comparably for comparable work. That was a problem of fairness across town employees. And I think 
it, it's very important to have it so that if you have job A and you work in one department and you have job A and you work in another department, that everything about your compensation and your work and all that, it's comparable. And, and, and he's focused on that to have that, <coughs> to have that done. Um, he's working hard, and the Amazon deal is, in a, is a good example. He's working hard to get the economic development aspect of the town done. Um, he's worked very hard with the school department and the school committee. And one of the th big changes that I think you can see is the level of cooperation between uh, both ends of Pearl Street. He worked very hard because he understands that it isn't them against us and us against them, that we're all one town. Uh, and if you roll the clock back three or four years, I think you'd find a different temperature on that relationship. So are there rough spots? Yeah, there are. Um, uh, and, you know, this isn't the place to do a detailed evaluation of any employee. Uh, um, uh, the last example I want to give is the budget process. Um, the budget process has been a major focus of him in helping us streamline how the budget is uh, prepared and presented to town meeting. And he developed a capital plan, which we hadn't had before. These are big things. Um, and it's part of the not so flashy aspect of government that people don't see. I, I pay attention to it. I don't like to hear that town employees feel un unappreciated because they are. Uh, and I do what I, everything I can, and I can't really get into to that, to make sure that, um, that every, all of the policies that the selectmen have is respectful of the town employees. I believe we should pay the employees, we recruit employees, you know, to stay. It costs us more, this is on the business end, it costs us more to lose a good employee. You know, mm. That's an expense. And, and the taxpayer, I don't want the taxpayer to hit that, and I don't want to have an employee feel like they should go somewhere else. Before we wrap up, I want to just get to a few quick hitting questions that we did in our previous episodes. Uh, it, one word answers here. Uh, best spot to relax in Stoughton? My backyard. Best spot to eat in Stoughton? Well, I would say the spa until uh, Amelia's. Uh, I think Amelia's is it, giving them a run for their money. And best part about Stoughton? The people. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, this has been another conversation with the candidate. I'm Jeffrey Pickett, host of Stoughton Spotlight. Thanks for tuning in. And just a reminder that Election Day is Tuesday, April 7th. Thanks again.